Hi, Science Two Kiddos. Just going to use these slides to go over the uh, Chapter Twenty Eight Point One reading from Hewitt. It's just a very brief introduction to our solar system. Uh, so our solar system is composed of the sun. That's our star. Uh, it is by far the largest thing in our solar system, as the textbook lets you know. It's about ninety nine percent of all matter in our solar system, which is pretty mind boggling. Um, the inner planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. They are all small, very close together, solid and rocky. They're usually refer referred to as terrestrial. You can see them all pictured right there. They also um, all have moons. And uh, life was, uh, they, they have found evidence of life recently on Venus, which is pretty interesting. Um, the other planets, by contrast, are much larger, more distant, and tend to be gaseous. We refer to them as Jovian. Uh, that's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. You can think of the last three as spelling out Sun. Uh, we used to consider a ninth planet, Pluto. However, it has been downgraded to a dwarf planet uh, because it hasn't cleared its orbit yet, which means that all these other planets, um, as they spin, they're not colliding with anything else. There's nothing else in their orbit. Um, Pluto is sort of orbiting in a little asteroid belt almost. It's ramming into all this other stuff that's still out there. And so technically it doesn't qualify as a planet. Now, space is really, really big, and so astronomers have to use a really big unit to actually measure distances. And the standard unit that's often used is called an AU, which stands for Astronomical Unit, and it's just based on the average distance of Earth from the Sun. So there's one astronomical unit right there. It comes out to be about 150 million kilometers, 1.5 times 10 to the power of 8 kilometers. Again, a distance that is difficult to wrap your mind around, but is useful when we're trying to describe the distance between Earth and um, Neptune, for example, because then it's a, it ends up being about 40 AU or something like that. You'll be working with some AU today uh, for an activity. Now, nebular theory is the widely accepted theory to explain the formation of our solar system, um, that basically we started off as a very large cloud of gas and dust, and that all collapsed in on itself um, due to gravity pulling everything inwards. And what's interesting is that our solar system also began to spin as this was happening, right? So there, you ended up with these sort of waves, but that becomes an interesting thing, so keep that in mind. Um, so gravity pulled matter towards the center, cloud began to spin uh, as it spun faster, as it collapsed inwards on itself, right? It gets faster and faster as things get closer and closer together. That's what's pictured here, right? So here's the fastest spin, and you can notice that it has flattened out. Uh, and this actually explains, too, the planets begin to form in this spinning debris, which is why every single planet in our solar system uh, orbits in the exact same direction, right? There's not a single planet that doesn't orbit in that same spin, right? There might have been something there at one point, but eventually that debris collided with other debris going in that one direction, and so that's why there's one dedicated direction to orbit. Um, the sun ignited, actually, technically after some of the planets began to form. Uh, it cooked the inner planets, that's why they are solid and rocky, uh, whereas the more distant outer planets remained gaseous. Uh, we are going to use a project to continue to explore more about our solar system in chapter 28, but it means that you will be teaching us about that. So anyway, hope this was a helpful introduction. Thanks.